Hello everybody, welcome to Total War Pharaoh Siege Gameplay. It is very awesome to get to show this to you guys, but keep in mind this is very early access to this build, so I imagine a lot of changes will happen. Uh, but one thing I do want to note, which I think is quite interesting, is Siege Towers do not require uh, an entity on the capture zone for it. They will just fire naturally without any kind of intervention there. And I want to note as well in the top right, you can see that we have 2,207 troops. Alongside 24 units, I believe. We have a lot more skills and options for certain units. Here, this uh, tier 4 archer has standard shot. It has the flaming arrows. It's got the rapid fire. It's got the uh, ability to increase its accuracy, I believe. And so every single unit that gets towards the higher tiers have more versatility, allowing you to shape and mold what that unit needs to do. For example, there's units that can swap out from being shielded uh, to being heavily armor-piercing with a mace, which will allow you to put them in the best positions possible and a unit that can do multiple things generally see you know generally speaking will suffer because it's the jack of all trades but in these cases these units are actually performing and their stats are very very effective for what we have here for example this unit on screen there was uh, a unit that has the ability to swap from a shield to a mace and there's a lot of units that specialize in you know mainly attacking but we can see rami's here is a composite bow guard don't really recommend making them but it does give you the option, if you're being sieged or if it's a land battle, you can change your lord to be either uh, focusing on ranged, focusing on melee, or focusing on being a cavalry. You have that dynamic options. And so there's a lot more layers to the sieges, mainly because of the fact that you have the capabilities of changing and molding your unit in the situation, which I think is really cool because you don't really get to see that in Warhammer Total War 3, for example. If it's a gobbo, it's a gobbo. A gobbo is not going to certainly pick up a bow and start shooting with it. It's either got a point the end that will ideally hit the enemy uh, or it will just basically be an archer and that's it also just wanted to mention i do not believe if you capture all of the victory points that you will lose the siege what will happen there is is just you'll lose the utility and the bonuses that they may give you for example i believe the armor smith if you are near it you'll replenish your armor so little things like that you've got to be a little bit careful um so there's less incentive to really spread your army out and especially with the towers shooting everywhere, you are in a much more defendable situation because oftentimes in Warhammer 3 in a siege, you'd have to split up your army significantly to try and defend everything. But here, you can really concentrate and consolidate your forces and um, have a much better chance of winning. So less units is more in this context. But thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And if you're interested in how armor works, make sure to check the video out on screen now.